Good evening, everyone, and welcome uh, to The Pink and Show, our dedicated canary shenanigans that has never declared ourselves special, uh, probably best. I'm Michael Bailey. Uh, we are here at the Woolpack Public House in the centre of Norwich. We are live. Uh, the guys behind us eating their Christmas meal have just got very excited. <laughs> and over the, the next 30 minutes or so, I don't think they were banking on this happening while they were eating. Uh, over the next 30 minutes or so, we will uh, try to work out just how good Max Ahrens is, see if Lee Johnson has any better jokes than the one about Alex Tetty's fouls, sign off for 2018 in style, look ahead to a crucial festive period, another flip the bird and wrestle with the idea of Grant Holt in a leotard and we will do all of this in the company of tonight's guests, a man of many digital faces, up and coming city writer Connor Southwell, not Subtle, and uh, whoa, bona fide Norwich City legend, three times player of the season and now Canaries ambassador, academy coach, but more importantly, a wrestler, Grant Holt. Uh, Great to have you both on. Merry Christmas, season's greetings. How are you both? Grant, you well? Excellent. Really good. Good. You? Yeah, not so bad. Not now, stressed now? Not, not so stressed now we're, we're going. That does always help. So, yeah. How are you, Con? Yeah, I preferred his intro to mine. But Did you? Oh, that's fair enough. <laughs> it's no, no, all good. Southwell. Yeah. There you are. Yes, there you go. well, Southall, surely. Southwell. Uh, yeah. I'm not having it. Anyway, great. Thanks for both coming on. Uh, it's going to be a laugh this one, I'm sure. Uh, now, uh, after the stunning success of uh, last week, all, all being well, we are once again live on four platforms, being Pinkin.com, the Pinkin Facebook page, as well as Twitter and uh, the Pinkin YouTube channel. And over the course of the show, we want to hear from you, uh, be it on City Successes, your hopes for uh, the Christmas and New Year schedule, even a bit of speculation in or out, uh, just don't mention Leverkusen, of course, but especially your questions for Halty, because we don't often get a bona fide legend in on the show, uh, and we'll try to get through as many of them as possible, bearing in mind I'm going to have to flip through all our various channels. Just bear with me, just as well as these two have in the, in the build-up to the show. And so you can get th those through to us on all those channels. Simply post your words uh, below the live feed on the Facebook, uh, Pink and Facebook page feed, uh, although I will try to check Twitter and YouTube too, uh, and hopefully all your messages will reach us uh, this evening. Uh, once again, I say that, Wesley Moulahan is here, but uh, Onel Hernandez has gone missing, much to Sean's uh, consternation. And, you know, Ipswich have won, so he's been in uh, a pretty good mood. Um, uh, so there we go. Uh, it's sort of business as usual, but it'll be with uh, Connor and a knife and, his, and my glass of orange juice. Let's hope he doesn't shatter the glass. <laughs> it's time for this week's Norwich City Headlines. <laughs> Very delicate. Well done, Connor. City's Cold War robs Robbins. Canaries battle the sniffles to claim a decent point at Bristol City. Max Ahrens is bordering on a young football genius with Daniel Farker not far behind. Uh, not that Bristol boss Lee Johnson found it funny after Alex Tetty somehow avoided his first City red card. First. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Speculate to accumulate. German journo takes a punt on who he'd like to replace the current Leverkusen boss who is still in post and mentions Daniel Farker. Not exactly the stuff of imminent announcement then. Like a rhythm, like that, yeah, really, getting, getting cocky. Uh, feeling good. Former Norwich hero Mike gets the call to help out Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in his caretaker role at Manchester United. It's good to see United have gone full Norwich City circa 2014. And finally... Hard Knocks Life. Some in Scotland assumed Kenny McLean hadn't broken through to, at Norwich because he wasn't good enough. And no wonder Kenny is keen to get back to full fitness as soon as he can. Uh, the good news is City's injuries are easing. Even Matt Jarvis is on the comeback trail. And what a story that would be. Wonderful. Are you happy with that? Yeah, great technique. Just getting better as it went on as well, which is good. <laughs> It always bears well. Uh, brilliant. Uh, let's start with the weekend, um, shall we? What did you make of the Bristol City game? It was on Sky, so that was obviously fortunate. But um, Grant, I'll come to you first. What did you make of it all at Ashton Gate? Um, I always think it's difficult when you go down there. It's a tough place to go. You know, Lee has them at it most of the time. They haven't the best of seasons this year, but I just thought it's one of them places where a lot of people go there and get, get stuck and not, Norwich don't have done. It's great that they keep coming from behind keep getting points from, from nowhere and it shows the spirit they've got in around the place at the moment so we've seen it the week before with Bolton they took it in and to be fair it's another point on the road so you can't grumble at that really I'm sure we're not the only ones who reminisce about what it was like in 2010, 9 and 11 and sort of re repeating all of that um, Norwich a little bit under the weather uh, I guess that was the cold probably in the end yeah yeah and I, th I think you have to take that into um, sort of consideration as well when you, when you look at the game as a whole um, they're, they're probably extremely lucky to get a point in the end I thought um, beyond maybe the last 20 minutes where 
they turned it on a little bit. But um, yeah, the fact they can keep coming from behind and, and keep getting points where they perhaps don't deserve to is um, is, is going to be key, I think, for this season. Because where you pick up them points and those three points that you didn't deserve, um, they can end up being really crucial, as, as we've seen before. Have you played with colds before? I mean, we, we sort of loke about it, laugh about it, and I think Daniel Farquhar actually called it flu. Whereas I think there's like a 50 quid test, isn't there? If you can't get out of bed for a 50 quid, then you've got flu. Other than that, it's a cold. But I mean, even then, is it? do you have those times when you play under the weather like that? You've just got to get on it, don't you? There's nothing you do about it. You've just got to kind of, if you want to play, you get on with it. Sometimes it's it's more the fact that you've not slept. If you're not slept and you're struggling to sleep, that's what really gets you. It's more the, the tiredness. But you've just got to get, get on with it and get through the game. I've played many a time and said, well, you don't, don't feel great. I don't, I don't think you're ever going to a game feel fantastic. Um, I think you're always going with something. But you just can't, as soon as you get going, you just got to get on with it. And you finish the game, you you sweat sweat it out, and you go on. The hardest thing is it goes through the squad quite quickly because you're with each other all the time. You sat with each other on a bus, a plane, or whatever, and you're in the train ground. So it's really difficult to contain. As I said, it's kind of sweat for it. And as you can tell, I'm a little bit bunged up, so I must have caught it off the more when I was in last week, probably. <laughs> or, I, or I spread it, one of the two. Oh, I think in journalists rock up with a blowy nose, and before you know it, you've got a whole squad ill. Um, your face, uh, the, um, the fact that Alex Tetty hasn't been sent off. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he's, fairly been, he's hardly been booked this season, but he was a little bit lucky, wasn't he, on Saturday? Yeah, he was lucky, but that's what he does. He gets around the pitch, doesn't he? But I'm so amazed that I can't believe he's not been in Everton top. I'm amazed at that. With all the fouls that he does in the game, it's quite amazing, that. Remarkable stat. Long may it continue. Uh, still averaging two points per game, which I guess feels like quite a key point. I think it's 44 from 22 games, isn't it, now? Yes, yeah, which is only a positive. Um, I'm a bit sceptical of, I think the next 10 games are quite tough, and West Brom have got the teams that Norwich have just faced and the, the, the thing that, that it was sort of switches a little bit so um, I, I'm sort of a bit sceptical at this stage to get carried away but um, yeah it's, it's certainly a positive if they can maintain it <laughs> at least Good to hear your feet are on the ground Connor it's the way to be i tell you what's interesting to me though Grant I mean, and you probably had this similarly when you went uh, when you were in the championship in 2010-11 but the start of that season I'm sure you weren't expecting to go up to the top two regardless of what was said in the summer and the same with this, this group I, they wouldn't have expected to be in this position now so how hard is it to change the dynamic and the thinking during the course of the season? I mean, at what point do you go, oh, actually, we could do something here? Because that must mess with where you were at the start of the season. No, you don't really. I think you're going to every season thinking, well, we'll see where it takes us. I think the championship is kind of one of them divisions. You just don't know where you're going to end up. We've seen it before with when the likes of Blackpool and things went up, and even our sales went up. You start off just thinking, we'll take each game that comes, and then you get momentum, and you get, then you get confident, thinking, well, hang on a minute, we beat someone who's... And what happens is you start thinking, so, well, we beat them last week, and they're supposed to be the second best in the division, so we must be the best in the division now. So next week you start maybe playing Bristol City, and you're thinking, we'll beat these this week. It's the confidence that comes by beating better teams. You kind of get in that mode of... And it depends. The hardest thing in the squad is, like I said, the, the point of the weekend... Once you're in that mindset, you think of it, well, that's a good point on the road because it's a tough place to go. Right now we're at home, we'll go and get that game up. That's the way you got to think about it. Never see it as like, oh, it's, it's too drop. You're saying just take the point and move on to the home games. Win your home games, get a point away from away from home, you'll be you're promoted. How hard is that transition, though, when you, you say you're beating top teams and you're thinking we're really good to then rocking up and getting surprised I suppose or caught out because you think you're better than you are because that must be such a fine balancing act I think every every now and again you get you get bit with it sometimes you take it for granted and you get the little spike but that's what the best teams do you don't play well you might not be having the best of games but you get something and that's the key if you can keep getting points from bad positions you'll always be okay I think that's what the team's doing at the minute I said this is a massive period now until you get to middle of January first week of February that's when you know where you're going to be so if, if you are up there you've got a fantastic opportunity to then go and win it you, you are in there to go and dominate it after that it's very exciting we'll see what happens as it all pans out uh, let's get some of your messages shall we um, Raids Midge says loves this show Halty's the best um, what's Halty's favourite ever Norwich player where's who oh, that might filter into a question later on um Mark Mark Edwards is Halty all over the specials board. I've not seen it. Where is it? I don't know. There is no. I don't. I don't know. They spe- There's two pints for a, some over there. I'm more looking at the drinks men offers more than the food offers. To be honest with you. <laughs> the um, the uh, Woolpack do a great line in food. There goes a bit of a plug there for the as the guys behind us. So they're having the best night of their lives. I think that's pretty much what I'm reading into that. Um, Hallahan, which could be Wes in, in disguise. Oh my God, Halty. 
and Roy Ives, Rory Ives, sorry Rory, Rory Ives says Merry Christmas lads. We'll take it Rory, Merry Christmas to yourself too. That's all on YouTube, so I am across all these platforms, um, like the beleaguered journalist I am. Um, we've got other questions as well. Alan Monument is ready and waiting. Alan, get your questions in, I'll try and uh, check through them. <laughs> And uh, loads more coming through, so we'll keep on those. Katie Die, she says on the Facebook feed. Katie Die says, "Hello, my daughters were at the Grant Holt Soccer School in the summer, uh, and absolutely loved it. They still talk about it. They have a question for Grant: How did you know you wanted to be a striker and not a midfielder or a defender? Smiley face. Um, well, I didn't. I started off as a defender. I was at Carlisle till I was." 16 as a defender and then I went back and played locally and then I went midfield uh, and the friend of mine said you need to go up front so the, the guy Eddie Jardine put me up front it was the first time I played up front I never looked back and that was good because sometimes when you were at Norwich you still played at right back didn't you there you go <laughs> learn to play everywhere you see that's what it is total halty football uh, much more from Grant as we go on of course and Connor too uh, now as you may be aware I hope you are by now uh, we have a new app the Pinken app how exciting uh, and if you become one of its users you get exclusive content from us including Paddy Davitt inviting you into his home on a Sunday to review the latest City what action what, what better what, what better a direct quote from halty we'll put that on the app um, and and as a special treat, uh, you can watch a little teaser of last Sunday's post-Bristol City edition right now. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. It's that time of the week again. Uh, so we drove back about an hour, stayed in Swindon. It's very uh, interesting Premier in, we'll leave that there. And then uh, hot-footed it back to Norfolk Sunday morning. Literally got back about an hour ago. It's just coming up to 22.4. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do before I get a cup of tea on the go is uh, is flick through the papers. I'm going to dive straight in with the mail on Sunday. This headline will be a common theme in all the papers I seem to have in front of me. Max Power. Mr. Aaron's, of course, lovely shot of the turned into the equalising goal. What more can you say about that, young man? Uh, did him as one of my pointers. The analysis I do up on the final whistle, uh, you know, just uh, running out of superlatives really uh, for a well a defender. But ultimately, the last two or three games he scored against Rotherham, and uh, the striker's instinct was evident again, having been redeployed by Daniel Farker in a left wing back role. Moving on. Sunday Mirror, as I say, a theme, max power, celebration shot, nice. They they continue to defy, don't they, because you just feel, you know, that was 10 games unbeaten in the league. First time, I believe, David Friesen reliably informs me, my colleague, since the Chris Hewton era. That underlines the level of consistency, um, and ultimately that is going to turn. They will lose a game, it's, it's inevitable, but uh, you just feel if they were to lose, that that won't spark uh a trend in the other direction because they've got too much about on this group I think so far so good so um, all in all long trip back at base rest up go again thanks for watching cheers We're back on seamlessly. Sean's doing a cracking job. Uh, don't forget, you can download the app on the App Store and Google Play. Just search. I think there is a strap for it, Sean. Just search. I mean, it's literally just the words of what I'm about to say. Search pink and two words. There you go. And you'll be able to find the app. Uh, let's have a little touch, said I would, on the Daniel Farker speculation. I mean, it's not really speculation. Everyone was probably, other sides have picked it up and it's, oh, Bayern Leverkusen want Daniel Farker. But actually, it's the equivalent of me in Germany saying, who would I pick if Daniel Farker left? And, you know, if I said that, Connor, you go, well, I'm not paying any attention to that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, yeah. No, that's... <laughs> well, if it was from you, I'm of course. But no, um, I, I think, yeah, you have to be careful with speculation. When, when Norwich are doing well, there's always going to be speculation. There always has been. Um, Norwich are that sort of club that they always get speculation whenever they do well of, of their best players, coaches, sporting directors going elsewhere. Um, I think until there's sort of some concrete evidence behind it or 
it's reported by someone fairly credible, then you and you just sort of ignore it and go, okay, that's that's nice to read, but um, yeah, I'm not worried about it at all. Sometimes it's not even nice to read. Um, better news on the injuries, though, isn't it, Connor? Because we haven't seen Kenny McLean. It was a nice line from him saying, oh, people in Scotland thought I just wasn't good enough, which must be pretty harsh. You're reading that, and you've just had ankle surgery. Yeah, must be. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to watch Kenny McLean. I, I saw him when he came on against Birmingham and was really impressed. Um, he looked good against Stevenage as well, and then obviously not been seen since. So um, he could be an important figure for Norwich in the second half of the season, and almost like a new signing, which, considering the lack of money in January, could be uh, quite big. Really, that is the ideal cliche. Really, did you come up against him when you were at Hibs at all? Yeah, when he's at Aberdeen. Yeah, um, yeah, good player. Good player. He's been unlucky. I said I get to see him quite a bit. Obviously, and speak to him quite a bit because when I'm when I'm up there. So, but it's just been it's just been unfortunate for him. I said it's never easy when you come down and you get injured. And he had a little niggle just before, then got involved. Then, so it's just a bit soft start. But he's a good player, Ken. Um, he's different to what they've got in there. Um, so it gives him a good diversity. I think in January when, when he's back and when he's properly probably fit it gives them another little option which I said I think with the squad they've got now I don't think there'll be that many getting added and get added out so um, it's the same with Jarv coming back it'd be, it'd be great to see him back on the pitch because he's just been so unlucky he, he just can't catch a break and I, I, I hate the point where people say he's just sitting down his money he doesn't want to do this anyone who's been in that pretty game and been injured and you can't do anything and you want to do it again it's the worst feeling in the world when you're watching lads going out kicking a ball all the time and and going playing football, everything you love doing, and you're standing there watching for the gym. No one wants to be in that predicament. So, for him, he's, he's worked really hard. He's been, I said, I get, I'm lucky enough to see him quite a bit. He's there nearly all the, the time doing extra and this, that, and the other. So, I'm just hoping he gets back on the pitch and starts flying again. It would be an incredible story for him, Louis Thompson as well, because of all that he's had to go through, which is just phenomenal. To the two of them when we went to Tampa, and it was, um, it was supposed to be a warning of lightning. I said, listen, you two, do everyone a favour, just stand next to each other, and then everyone else will be safe. <laughs> I mean, you, you joke, I mean, they're, the, the character, the mentality for those guys to, to battle back from where they've been, I mean, and they're still on that journey, so they, they're still doing that now, aren't they? That must take a colossal amount think, of self belief. It's different journeys, I think, because obviously, Joe's been where he's done, he's had his career at the Prem, and he's, he's keeping going, he's, he's older now. I think it's different for him, because obviously, you want to, I was pretty similar, I done my knee at 33, and you're coming that in when you really want to enjoy the end, you've worked all them years to get that thing and you, you can't do it, so for him it's different, Louis has been so unlucky, to, injuries like that to get shorter, and, uh, but he'll come back stronger, um, and it, it'll be when he's back and when he's flying, he's, he's doing really well, he's rehabbing with Carlton, so they, they won't be too far along hopefully. Carlton, uh, happy birthday to Louis, I think it's his birthday today, I think it was on Twitter. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Right, yeah, and Carlton, uh, Carlton's I think was at the weekend or something. So happy birthday, Carlton! <laughs> happy birthday, Carlton! Happy birthday, Louis! Um, under 18s, uh, we teed them up last week. They made it through to the fourth round of the FA Youth Cup, so they're off to Preston in the fourth round. Under 23s, you drew 1-1 at home to Sunderland, I think, the other day, and that sounded like a lively end to the game. Were you around for that one? I wasn't there, but I was. Uh... I was watch, I've watched it since I got it, the video, so I watched the game. So I think Norwich scored on the break, but then the, it sort of got yeah, rolled out. He basically went into the, the goalkeepers, came out and headed it, um, and then I think the camera we was bumped into him, and he went down, and then someone stuck it absolutely in the top corner, and they uh, disallowed it, saying it was a foul. After all the Sunderland players ran to the line. Well, you've got to protest, haven't you? Protest your innocence. <laughs> protest your innocence. Um, I mean, we should touch, we'll touch on it in a bit, of course, but you are working, is it still a day a week at the yeah, academy? Yeah, a day a week, yeah. So, so and which, which groups are you working with? How's it been? We do um, 15s to 23, so it could be a mixed bag. So we kind of do it now where I'll do forwards, midfielders, wingers. Um, Neil takes a group as well, and then um, between the other coaches, some, we'll kind of swap around, back four, go with certain people. So it works pretty well. So I get, it's good because I get to see a, a broad um, spectrum of them. So it's quite good and you try and give them little tips and hopefully then when it comes off then you, you feel like you've done a good job. Hashtag Coach Holtzy. Although, I mean, Gary's doing pretty well, isn't he? Living to It's amazing when it takes someone two years to get back into a job and then, he's, then he does what he does. So um, there'll be a few clubs who he put his name in for jobs look at thing and I wish I took that put now. And he only got the job because the guy who beat him to the interview first time around failed yeah exactly so there we go uh, brilliant stuff okay so let's get through some of your questions shall we thank you for all these keep them coming in I will do my best um, I'm sure there's some few we can get you to answer as well Connor. don't worry uh, David Lee you know David don't you yep um, he's straight on there uh, what did Grant uh, think um, Carlton Morris ha- does does Grant think Carlton Morris has an important role to play in the second half of the season it's a tricky one for Carlton I suppose because 
It might be that he gets loaned out, I suppose. Yeah, never to, to be honest with him, um, he's doing a lot better than he should be. He's ahead of schedule with what he's doing. But um, I think for him, it's probably more so just getting back fit, getting getting strong. He'll probably wait and see. I think they're going to have to wait and see with him because we don't, we don't actually know the date when he'll be back. So it's always a difficult one with him. But they'll probably... I don't know if he'll ever get to game time with the club where he'll go out on loan for a, a month or two, but I don't know how it works. So that's Neil Adams' department, Dan, don't mind. Ah, good old Neil Adams. I have to try and get him on the show. Come on, Neil, on the show. Uh, John Gibson, newly formed West Coast of New Zealand Hockey Tika, Norwich City Supporters Club. Great stuff. Well done, John. Ask Grant, uh, if you could ask Santa for one player from the Championship and one from League One, who would you buy and who, why would they fit into this group of players? Cheers, Grant, for all the memories. Uh, it's tough one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'll sit on that actually. Championship and League One player. Uh, Tony Bisham, hello, waving hand. Grant Holt, do you think we will get promoted straight out? Big question. Um, I hope so. I, I just, you, you can never tell in the division. The good thing is we're, we're flying, we're doing really well. We look like we're scoring goals now. We're strong at the back. We've got everything in the mix at the moment that makes you believe that we'll go and get promoted. But in this division, you never know. The, the trouble is, games come quick and fast. Injuries come thick and fast. Um, I think if we can keep the squad together that we've got now, keep them fit, I think we've got a fantastic chance. This is a good one. Uh, the last one, by the way, and then we'll, we'll, something else I want to ask. Richard Cuffley. I don't know if Richard's related to David. I hope so, Richard. Um, would Grant have enjoyed playing in a Daniel Farker team? Um... I think with the way he plays, once you know you're rolling that thing as a number nine, you'll be fine. I think you'd be frustrated at first if I was a number nine because you're not as getting as many. But once you know the dynamic of once you watch it and what they're seeing and doing, it'd be great because you don't do as much running. So I'd be absolutely fantastic with it. <laughs> what have you seen with Timu Pukki? <laughs> because his movement is fantastic, isn't it? And he does look like someone who's just fitted perfectly into the way Daniel wants him to play. Yeah, he just fits, he fits them all. I think, it's, I think it's helped that he's came from abroad as well. I think it's helped that he's been abroad and he's been there and he's seen that dynamic of how, how they play in Europe. And I think to Daniel coming in with his philosophy, I think he's suited it really, really well. And I think if you look at Jordan now, I think Jordan's now getting what is expected of him in that in that role now. So I, I think you can see they've finally grasped what he was trying to show them. So I think once you get your head around that, then you'll be fine. Great stuff. Team of Pookie, not bad, is he? No, not at all. Um, yeah, I, I think Grant's right. You have to be a fairly selfless player, I think, to, to do that role up front that he and, and Jordan Rose does as well at times. Um, because often what you're doing is, is creating space for other players as opposed to perhaps getting chances for yourself. So you have to be quite an intelligent footballer, which I think he is. And um, yeah, I think his education abroad will have helped with that, no doubt. Uh, right, keep your questions coming in. Uh, those are on the Facebook page and the Pinkham uh, YouTube channel. Uh, keep them coming on. We're on Twitter as well, hopefully. I think we still are. So that's all good. Um, plenty more time to ask Grant questions. Um, but one I wanted to ask, Grant, and this is putting you on the spot. I'm going to be blatantly honest about it. Team Wes versus Team Russ. We've got the big game coming up in May. Huge occasion for both players. I'm still talking about that. But who are you actually going to play for? <laughs> I've not been invited yet. Well, all right. Say you've just been invited. Say they're both just behind me. They're not. And they're like, Grant, come play for me. No, come play for me. You know, remember, who's it going to be? I'll, um, I'll wait and see where I'm told to play. So, I don't know. I'd have to wait and see how many players they've got. Would, would you look at who they've picked already and go, I'm not playing with him? To be honest with you, I'd, I'd probably, I think I'll probably play on both, to be honest with you. So I'll, so I'll probably try and play both. If I can, play for one, one and a half and then play for one and the other half, hopefully. Yeah. So that's a pretty good compromise, actually. Well done. That's almost like the ringer you are, I suppose. Yeah, just sit on the fence. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, you know, the problem is, I think um, Wes claims the credit for your three Player of the Seasons awards, doesn't he? But then, you know, before for it, so I don't know why he keeps milking it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I've given credit before for it. So to be fair, they see me go from the other day on Instagram. They'll, de they'll they both definitely want me. Which which was that Portsmouth? No, obviously when I was up uh, supporting Denver. Um, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, we'll talk about that as well in a moment. All right, well that, that's on the thing. Tom Cantwell couldn't believe it. Worst manager ever. Him and Jamal Lewis, worst manager ever. Three 0 down after six and a half minutes. Didn't know what. Didn't know what they hit them. So what, what happened then? Well, they didn't sort it out. Well, they well they didn't. So <laughs> we we got tired, and uh, Mike Milligan started giving too many goals away. Still, great cause. What a day! I mean, oh, fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant for him. So, um, and the turnout was fantastic. As I said, it's not easy late in the day of Sunday, and um, they raised a fantastic amount of money. And um, giving that young man, hopefully, a, 
fantastic opportunity to go and do some stuff that he's always wanted to do in his life. So, no, I'm, I'm really thankful I, was, I got asked to go. It's a fantastic course. Well done, guys, and everyone who was involved and made, made that happen. Um, right, many more questions coming up. In the meantime, I think we should have a go at this, Sean. Ready? No, he's not ready. Go on, then. Brilliant. Seamless, this show. Professionalism. We're still going. That's good. Uh, yes, Flip the Bird. Um, the game that peaks every week. Well, that's sort of putting it nicely. Uh, last time out, Nathan Tuck took the honours with a moderately improved six, while Spud did likewise to five, and Nathan's son, um, Callum, picked up a solid debut three. So tonight, Connor has the chance to boost his opening four, while Grant Holt, a remarkably uncompetitive man, makes his <laughs> flip the bird debut. Uh, so that should be good. Um, you have 30 seconds to flip as many bar mats as possible, adding one to their flipping do pile time, yeah? with each. Well, do one and then catch it and add to your pile, Grant. Um, uh, and keep doing that um, and then you get 30 seconds to collect as many more um, and we'll do a, lead, uh, a selfie at the end with the winner um, let's just move these drinks out of the way uh, Sean's ready you've got your timer as well yeah do you want me to do the timer all right I'll do the timer I can pretty sure I can do that um, if uh, in a second um, we'll do that so that's all good uh, you guys are ready how nervous are you feeling Connor Oh, I'm in bits here. You're in, in bits. bits. Yeah, that's good to know. I have my timer. Let's get it. Three, two, one, go! And away we are. It's a fast start from Grant there, but he's um, he's he's gone for the catching upwards technique. I did tell him that wouldn't work, but there we go. He's, he's catching though. He's catching. He's doing all right. Connor's taking his time, taking a lot of time, and the script's in his way. I told you we don't worry about the script. Well, two hand. I've never seen two-handed catch, but it counts. Uh, uh, Connor's lost one down the side. I don't even know how many he's got. I've given him an extra one. I tell you what, Grant's Grant's doing a. It's, it's unorthodox, but it's working. A bit like his football career. Um, <laughs> he's not hit me yet, so that's good. Oh, uh, and that's 30 seconds. Good job. I was looking at the clock, which I obviously wasn't. Um, the, the crowd there, round of applause. Sean, can you get them on camera? There we go. That's, that's the guys there who are now officially delighted and hiding in embarrassment that they're live. Uh, I'll come to Grant's pile in a moment. Connor, what did you get? Uh, five. Five? Which is one better than last one time. One better than last so time, so take progress. it, take it. Grant. He's got about 30. Yeah. Three. Eight. Eight. It's an eight for Grant Holt. It doesn't put him top of the leaderboard. Oh. But uh, uh, Steve Cook and Chris Reeve have 11 and 10 respectively. And you're, you're joint with Tom Parsley and Andy Lorne of Along Come Norwich. Happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that eight for first attempt. That means you have to come back on and outdo yourself yeah, now. I'm just yeah. Keep practicing it. Uh, well done, everyone. Top work. Enjoyed that, Connor. Uh, yeah, I got through yeah. it. I got, got through it. it. Yeah. yeah, five's not bad. Yeah. I'll take it. Good to remove the drinks anyway. They've had them all, haven't they? Just blame the scripts at one point. <laughs> just everything was flying everywhere, but we took it. Uh, another su <laughs> completely successful flip the bird. Uh, Sean, you happy? Are we there? <laughs> Should we? Do you want to play another sting? Or you, no, you don't want to play another sting. All right. Well, in that case, this is the uh, point at which we like to uh, have a. A chat because we spend time getting these guys on. We like to have a um, a chat about what they're doing. Um, although we've done that a bit with you already, Grant, but we'll do a bit more as well. Um, but Con, let's come to you first. Now, you're a lot, of, a lot of hats. There's a lot of digital fan sites, and I think you've probably yeah. partaken in most of them. Yeah, I think I've done everyone now. So um, yeah, I need some sort of hat trick ball or testimonial or something. Definitely, I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why not, Team Connor? Exactly. Um, what, uh, I mean, how much are you enjoying it? Because it's, it's, it's probably different to people having to try and come through sort of 20 years ago when they didn't have those, those opportunities. Yeah, it's good. I, I think, yeah, as you say, it's, it's a lot easier nowadays than it would have been perhaps 10, even 15 years ago. Um, and it's just about getting yourself out there, really, and writing as much as you can and doing as much as you can. Um, trying to say yes to most things, um, <laughs> which isn't always easy, but, but you try to. Um, and no, it's, it's good fun. I've enjoyed it. And yeah, I don't, I don't think I'd have seen myself here a year ago so um, yeah enjoying it and trying to improve which is the main thing well you say that so how do you improve what's the plan for next year do you think I, th I think for me in, in terms of writing I always try and read people who are better than me um, you try and take what you can from different people and, and try to see and how you can put your own take a twist on it um, watching as much football as you can which again isn't always easy but but you try it try your hardest um, so so yeah in, in terms of next year I've got no real plans I'll just see where I end up Still a young man, Connor, so you know, just enjoy it and make the most of it, I say. Uh, Holt, you've already touched on the fact you went to Tampa, so yes. that was obviously good. That's your ambassadorial role, isn't it? Yes. Which is, I didn't exactly know that you had it probably until this season, so is that, is that, is that fun? For two years. But, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it is fun. It, it's good because it gives me the, the ability in it to, um, 
still go out and do stuff for the club, meeting different people that you don't really get to meet when you're playing. Um, I don't know. I do all sorts of vast stuff where it could take me meeting. Could be meeting customers. Could be meeting um, commercial. Could be going out like I've done for the gymnastics with the girls with the, the Beaver and stuff like that. But there's stuff where the club do that a lot of people don't see. In terms of like, um, we went to Goldston to drop off a season ticket for. A, an elder gentleman who couldn't get out to get it and just little things like that so they do a lot of stuff in the background they don't always document what they're doing um, which is sometimes good because they do things in the background that I enjoy doing as well so but it's it's fantastic I said the Tampa trip was really really good in terms of the way it worked I thought it was fantastic That's good stuff and we already touched on the coaching which is I get the impression the thing you want to do you're still a young man yourself so I mean I enjoy, that's the thing. I enjoy doing it I said it because I obviously I do then I do Langley School on a on a Thursday, um, which is the same thing. I get a lot of kids all different ages. Um, that's going really well. It's a good crossover because we get to see the Norwich lads who are doing a Tuesday. Who are, some of them are in the school, so it's a good balance between the two. Um, but I enjoy having the ability to go in one, go in the other, and then have free time to go and do other stuff. The Norwich is brilliant because I get to do um, a, a variety of stuff. I go and do co um, scouting last week. I was watching a couple of lawn lads and put reporting, so it gives me the ability to do different stuff. So I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, that's brilliant stuff. And in terms of coaching the kids, I mean, that, I imagine it's quite different to say coaching, you know, adults and what have you. It, it, do you want to make that transition, or would, would you be happy to sort of sing around and? and well, me either. Or the thing is, tw when you're doing the 23s, I like men anywhere really. So um, it doesn't really bother me. A coach is a coach. You've got to coach everyone with different abilities. So some just because you're a pro doesn't mean you're good. At, you're fantastic at everything. You're consistent at most stuff, but it doesn't mean you can. You're always there to learn. The one thing I learned as I got older is you learn more stuff. If you watch different, like we we're just talking about, the more people you see, the more they do stuff. They take different bits. I said in my game ended up got better and better because it's modelled on six, seven forwards I'd seen in my time. So no, it's really good. And you are still playing, aren't you, as well? Horsford Vets? Yeah, still playing. I said, still rocks them when I can on Saturday, but obviously I've been pretty busy. And then the Vets on the Sunday, so I just do it to keep fit. I have a real good laugh. I, the, the, the Vets League is good, it's competitive. Um, you shake hands when you come up, you go, you go back, you have a beer, you have a laugh and a joke, and, and that's what I enjoy about it. Oh, you say it's competitive. I mean, we've had Hux on here before, who, of course, is at Quingleford Vets. I mean, this is like a prop. He's injured at the minute. He? Yeah, he's done his hamstring, yeah. Is that because he's getting old? <laughs> he's still too fast, that's his trouble. <laughs> too fast for his leg. I mean, that, that is competitive. That's like a proper Norfolk rivalry, isn't it? Gringleford versus Horse of Vets. Well, I think everyone's rivalry. I think it, you just don't want to lose, do you? So I think it's always, we beat them this year anyway, so it doesn't really matter. No. Yep. Oh, there we go. Well, um, the, you got the wrestling. You know, it's on the wrestling. Are oh, you going to come to that later on? Well, funny you should say that, Grant. Like sp spoken like a true media professional that you are. <laughs> um, it's not just about football for Grant Holt. Have you read my script? Um, these days, he's got a rather big debut coming up on Saturday too. While we're all in Lancashire, QVT. Yeah, it's tough. I said it's it's a different dynamic when you come in. The, the difference you do, the different muscles you think you, when you jump from heights and landing, and you, when you get home, you could certainly feel it. So it's completely different. I said it's it's good. I still do the football, which keeps the endurance levels up, and then I do this to do all the power. So no, it's it's um it's been really good. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I think anyone knows me. I like a different challenge. I like doing different things to keep myself busy. So this has been really good. Grant come down. You met the family, and uh, you know he had uh, a ten minute session in the ring, and he loved it. And from there, you know he's gone on and he's won the forty man Crusher Mason Memorial Trophy, and uh, he's set to do his single debut in literally ten days' time. I do all the football. I still do the pundits. I still do all the coaching. The difference with this was I got set a challenge and got asked to do it for charity. Um, anyone who knows me who's been around me, I want to get set a challenge, I don't just do it half-hearted. That's my biggest downfall, I can't do it. So when someone says to me, look, do you want to do this for charity, do you want to do it? And I say yes, then I want to be the best at what I do. I can't just turn up and go, oh, well that's me walking in the ring and I'll hit someone with a close line, that's it done. It doesn't work like that in my mind. So as soon as I said yes, I knew that I had to um, get on the ball with it, do things right, make sure that when I step in the ring it's done properly and, and give people a fantastic show and show them how good I can be at doing it. That's what I think's probably surprised everyone in the gym that, and the people who do it with me. That when I set my mind to it, then I want to do something. I do it properly, and I think that 
uh, in the industry we're, we're in and the, the people in the WAW and the, and the wrestlers who do it I think they've embraced that and seen how hard I work in the background and it's given them that little buzz as well to work even harder the best wrestler ever known nowadays it's a, it's a big entertainment business you know you've got the wow factor you've got to learn the wrestling side of things you've got to be able to talk on the mic you've got to be able to put over storylines stuff like that and uh, so yeah he's, he's got every attribute you need to be a pro wrestler and he's took you a lot of duck to water and I can't praise him enough for his attitude and his willingness to learn um, I'm really looking forward to next week it should be uh, really interesting it's obviously going to be a bit of nerves because you're going into the ring and there's going to be people there and it's the first time I've really stepped in the ring properly uh, in terms of doing my own, my own fight so you're going to be a little bit um, nervous but I'm really really looking forward to it I think as I said in, in football I was always better with a crowd so I'm sure I'll rise to it next week bits and pieces in there from Grant, it's great stuff. Uh, what, were you, did you like wrestling as a kid? Has it had it been on your reg, reg, register before you started doing it? No, I loved it as a kid, absolutely loved it. When I think most people did. I think most people did when younger. Um, since then I haven't really had anything to do with it. I took my nephews and that when they were younger because they enjoyed it and then didn't have anything to do with it and it was literally, they came to me last year and said, look, can you come and do a, a show for us in May for charity? And I said, look, I can't because I had a game for Barrow, so I said, I can't go play. But I'd, I'd tell you what I'm doing. Next year I'm definitely going to retire, which I knew I'd retire this year. Um, well, I thought at the end of this season I knew I was going to retire. I said, so we'll do a show at the end of that year. And, and that was it. So I know for a fact that whatever we make in that show, 10% is going to go to charity. Um, so we've kind of done stuff around learning how to get a premise. Because the trouble I've got is when I try and do something, I always want to be good at it. So you now then get sucked into trying to get good at doing it. So. I've got the. I've obviously had uh, done the rumble. I've got the one v one match of the weekend, and then obviously I, I've got the big tag one for next year oh. in June. A tight. Why is it title? Tag match. Yeah. Tag match. No tag. I'm, yeah. I'm well, all over it. Yeah. I'm all over it. Well, it's yeah. all right. So how? Well, have, have you got like an idea of how long this is going to go on for? Is, is this like a proper career? Well, me, me, me plan is just to do the for the fight next year. So that was always my plan for it'd be June, June next year. Um, was always the plan to do the event, so that was my plan there. So we'll just see what happens up until that point. Well, hang on. So if, if I transpose this to my boxing knowledge, which is only marginally better than my wrestling knowledge, you, you need to win this debut, don't you? Well, you always need to win. You don't want to lose, do you? <laughs> What's the whole point? That's, that's the pressure, isn't it? Pressure on you to perform. I mean, you know, you might get into the ring, competitive stuff, and fail miserably. Well, I might not. I might be superb at it. See, that's why the difference between me and you. You're looking at negative. I'm looking positives. <laughs> That's why you get elites get there and you don't, others don't. And you know what? That brings balance to the force. So it's absolutely that's fine. It. Yeah. Uh, well, that's exciting. Are you nervous about Saturday? Are you like, excited? I mean, it's going to be something different. Isn't it? Yeah, a little bit nervous because like, it's, it's a bit like when you're training, you're in the ring by yourself. There's no one there. There's no mistakes or whatever. And you might jump off the rope and miss it or this and the other. But when you do it there, everyone's going to see it. So you're going to miss the rope. You want to do it training, not the other time. So... I'm nervous, it's, it's good, it's down at Epic, so there'll be a few, I think it's selling reasonable decent tickets at the moment, so I think there's still tickets for sale if anyone wants to go and watch on Saturday, so Saturday night. Brilliant. Girls are fighting on Friday, the Bella Truck Show, so it's women, all women on Friday, and then uh, we're Saturday night. What a weekend of wrestling then, get down. That's it, get down. It's going to be a cracker. I'm hoping we'll have some sort of video coverage of it on the night, which we'll see. Good luck with it, good luck with it. I'm sure you'll win, I'm confident. I hope so. Yeah. Have you got like a wrestling name? Well, I think I'm going to go with the Incredible Hulk. Good, yeah. Because of that. Good effort, yeah. 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 From Marathon Bet. So Marathon Bet done it last year for Hibs and I quite like it, so I might keep it. And I might speak, I'm speaking to Mar going to speak to Marathon Bet to see if they're interested in doing something with the char for the charity aspect. So uh, I'm going to make them phone calls once I've... They might say, no, you're not nicking the name, but we won't say. <laughs> I suppose the other issue is your outfit. I get, is, that, is that a thing with wrestling? Your outfit. I mean, you could do like a green morph suit. Nah, I'll be all right. I'll just wear pants and a top t-shirt. I'll be all right. I'll get the ladies in. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> Good luck.
and make sure you get along to Epic Saturday night uh, and of course uh, that will be a cracking night. Okay so let's bring you up to speed with some football and the championship picture as it stands ahead of the halfway point uh, which is um, and of course ahead of the Christmas carnage too. So uh, the results Monday night's Midlands derby did Norwich and Leeds a favour with the United picking up uh, victory at Bolton on the Saturday. Villa and Stoke ended in stalemate while Blackburn threw a two goal lead at home to Birmingham. Ipswich finally won a game that they had to win in fairness. Sean's cheering. Lucky Sean. That's, that's why you're here this week. Is it? Um, their first taste of victory under a certain Paul Lambert of course. Uh, so at the bottom Towns win doesn't really do much to ease their plight but no doubt offers them a small dollop of hope. Hull are climbing steadily but below them it remains particularly tight. As for the top half, it's Leeds who returned to the summit while City's gap to third was cut by a point. Swansea were the big winners um, uh, after three straight defeats, but Borough are struggling. Their league form, compounded by a home Carabao Cup quarter-final defeat last night to League on Burton. So uh, there are these are the fixtures at the halfway point of the season. The only sides yet to face each other with Sunday's lunchtime clash at Villa Park, the standout. Ipswich host Chris Wilder's finest, while Norwich follow up their trip to Ewood Park on, with a Boxing Day visit from Nottingham Forest. Derby arrive three days later before City head to Brentford on New Year's Day. I think we've kind of touched on this already, haven't we? But this is this is pretty pivotal, this period coming up now, isn't it, Connor? Yeah, I think so. I think from here to about the Ipswich game, which is early February, I think Norwich have got teams which are pretty much in and around them. So um, if, if they want to um, maintain what they've, what they've started and, and give people hope that perhaps this season could end in promotion, um, then they, they need to maintain what they've done so far over this period. And then only then, perhaps post Ipswich, we can, we can start looking at um, the dream endings, maybe. But... Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough period, as Christmas always is, because there's so many fixtures. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see how they get on, to be honest. Grant, Norwich City legend, also played under Paul Lambert at two different clubs. How do you see the uh, the events down the road? Um, I see in them exactly as what they are. They're a club that's, for the last few years, sold the best players. They tried to go with Hurstie in a new dynamic. It didn't really, didn't really work. Players weren't really buying into what he was doing. It's just a restructure. He's going, to, he's going to go in there like this. It, it, he'll, he'll turn it around because that's what he does. He, he motivates people. He'll get the best out of the lads who are in who are the sign from Shrewsbury. He'll start picking them up. He'll get Luke Chambers back at it. He'll get the group, the dynamic better. Um, is it a tough ask for him to stay up? Absolutely. Um, to be that, that much adrift at this stage of season, it's very difficult when you're at the bottom to go win after win. It's not like when you're at the top and you're doing really well, you can go three, six, nine points. When you're at the bottom, it doesn't really work like that. But, I think that win the weekend's massive for them. One, they got the win. Two, they got the clean sheet. Um, and it gives them that little lift just before Christmas. So, as I said, this period for them now is as, probably as big as it is for Norwich in terms of where, where you see yourself in January. Because they could be facing the abyss by, um, by the end of January. Um, so... You think Paul will need that to if, say if you were a player, you'd need you'd look at the table, wouldn't you? You'd need Ipswich to still be in contact if you're going to make that move there, regardless of how good Paul Lambert is at selling it. Well, that's it. Yeah, you, you've got, you've got to kind of. I don't think in January they're going to have that much movement. I don't think they will. I think they'll, they'll probably look at it thinking, well, hang on a minute. Well, we might go down here. Do we start now looking at people down the the other, the other end? A bit like when we came to Norwich, you've done at Colchester. A bit like we done when we went down. You, you, your whole dynamic changes so are they going to go and start buying people for championship to, to keep them in it I don't think they will I think they'll go down the loan route try and get lads in on loan that he thinks will add that little bit extra but I don't think they're going to buy so he's that's his group and he's going to get the best out of them um, Matt Gill of course has gone down there as well were you a little bit surprised that he made that switch I mean that's a brave decision and I'm sure Paul's been speaking to a few players who he's played with at Norwich going oh, you want to come and help me out here and they might have said no because I can't do that but you know some Gilly could obviously I think for him it's an opportunity to go and work with the first team environment so well listen we're not stupid we're in Norwich there's not many teams that's close to here where you can really he's got his family he's, he's lived here all his life his wife's settled here the kids are settled here um to get a first team opportunity, opportunity, especially to go with Paul, who he knows a trust, um, it's a bit of a no-brainer for him, really. He's done a fantastic job with the 23s, but his progression is he wants to work with first team players. He's been there, he's done that, and he wanted to go back in. So for him, I think it's a fantastic move. People see it differently, but for him, I think it's fantastic. He's got, he's gone in there, and he'll, and hopefully, learn a lot of Paul, and eventually, he wants to be a number one. So 
Good luck to him, I say, top man, Gilly. Uh, brilliant. Okay, um, Norwich, of course, we'll, we'll try and move on with time a little bit. Norwich uh, at Blackburn on Saturday. Uh, Callum, should we have a look at uh, Connor? Sorry, Callum. Uh, Connor, let's have a look at your 11 that you would pick if you were in the dugout on uh, on Saturday. Um, and it's fair to say, it's what well, I guess you're banking on players being fit, but then this is the side you'd want to play if everyone was available. Yeah, I think so. Um, I've, I've put Hernandez back in there mainly because I think the impact he made against Bristol City when he came on pretty much within two minutes. Can um, I just say that that should be Marco Stiepelman uh, just yes. off, off Pookie. That's my fault. That's I mean, not not too Morris Lightness. I mean, I like Mo Lightness. <laughs> T- two's a bit much, yeah. Um, no, yeah, so I've put Hernandez back in there. Um, Hanley, have I put Hanley back in? I have put Hanley back in. Not count well. No, no. Just because I think that... Um, yes, two-man of the match is not good enough for him, though. Yeah, yeah, and this is the dilemma. Um, but, but no, I, I just think Hernandez provides something different um, with his pace. And I mean, Bristol City pretty much retreated when he came back on. And, and I think, I think away from home, Hernandez is is probably a better option than Campwell. I think Campwell's more of a home player when, when teams sit back and he can put, operate in the tight spaces. Um, I think away from home, there's going to be a bit more space. Hernandez can exploit that space a bit more and he's better one-on-one. So that's why I've put him in there. See, we, we get the, a bit of Daniel Farkon in there, see? He was then the Daniel Farkon, I'm the journalist. Was, and it, uh, 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 <laughs> see, it's not easy on you there, though, is it? Well, I was thinking we get all these fans in and they all yeah. give us their teams. They don't think about the players' reaction no. when they drop them, do they, Grant? Well, that, well that's it. That, that, that's the trouble you've got. This is what, this what you've got to think about it all the time. You, you, how can you drop someone like Todd Campbell for... He's had two man of the match. He's been probably the best player for us in the last probably four or five weeks, probably. And then you're going to leave him out. So you we'll keep expect, him hungry. You expect, <laughs> yeah, yeah, over Christmas. Yeah, um, that, and that's the thing. I think sometimes the team's settled. It's settled. Do you know what I mean? It, they're, they're playing well. I think unless <clears throat> injury or a real dip of form comes in, I, don't, I think at the moment you can't really you can't really change the side. I think they do, they're all contributing. Thing. It's great that we've got the lads coming back like Grant Hanley, experience. All them boys being around it and coming back, Morris and people like that, it um, gives them a little option. And the great thing, what it does, is it picks you up because you don't want to be dropped. So it makes you play that little bit, run that little bit further. Yeah, absolutely, indeed. Um, Blackburn, interesting side. They've got Harrison Reed there this year. He was doing well again, and he was obviously a popular here too. Bradley Dax, the one for me though, he seems to really make them tick. Great player. Um, took a little bit longer for him to go than I thought it would. I thought there'd be a few people. I was surprised he actually stayed at um, Gillingham that extra year. I thought he'd have gone. Um, I think he's in his self. I think he's worked worked harder this year. Off season, that by all accounts, he's worked better in the gym and off the pitch. He was a little bit lazy, a little bit heavy. And I think he's as a talent, he's fantastic. I think he's reaping the rewards this year from from the team and working on it. Tony Mowbray's done a fantastic job as well, stabilising everything. Uh, right, get your last questions in. I'll go through those on various things when we got time because we are running out of time. But uh, a key man for Norwich City over Christmas and I don't know. Let's say prediction of where they'll be come after Brentford so that's four games time where they'll be in the division uh, key man um, Mo Leitner I think I think Norwich look a better team when he's when he's in it um, he sets the rhythm sets the tempo of how they play uh, can play through the thirds I, I just think he's an excellent player at this level um, so I think he's integral to, to how Norwich will do hopefully they'll still be in the same place but I feel like they might lose one of Forest or Derby so I'm going to maybe maybe second or third Lose one, win the other three, still more than two points yeah. a game. Um, both fullbacks for me, either one. I think they're integral at the moment to what everything that we do, they're a massive part of what they do. The, the uh, drive team's back, they let Leitner and everyone go and do what they want to do, come inside, roll inside. I just think they're massive for the club at the minute. Uh, in terms of position wise, I think we'll still be where we are. I think the division will probably tighten up. From that top six, I think, in that top six, I think the points will be tighter, but I still think we'll be there or thereabouts. What a pair those two are as well, 18 and 20 years old, phenomenal stuff. Okay, let's get some quick questions then, shall we? On YouTube, um, uh, Ian Walker is, uh, well, I see Ian Walker, Spurs goalkeeper, might be, who knows. Uh, great to have Grant on the show watching from Christchurch, New Zealand. Hope you're in the uh, New Zealand supporters club that um, someone mentioned earlier. Um, Johannes BB, what does Grant uh, think um, who would win if Canaries play... Uh, I don't know what that says, Jonas. Sorry. Holti's favourite goal. Your favourite city goal against Coventry when I jumped in the snow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great sellies. Great sellies. Um, 
I'm trying to read that question again. What? He's just trying to say, would our team beat the, the, the Tim Curry teams? That's trying to say. That's exactly what he's trying to say. Well done, you haven't even read it. Yeah, of course. Who would win, the current team or 20, 10, 11? Oh, the, the, my team, of course I would. Is that because you were in it? No, I just had a better team. Um, Rory Ives, which player did Grant play with at Norwich do you think is the most likely to become manager of Norwich? Um, probably Matty Gill. Not Russ? No, probably Matty Gill. Ciao. Well done, thanks everyone on YouTube. Let's quickly go over to Facebook. Um, and let's have a look and try and read them maybe before I just read them out. Um, we asked that one. Uh, oh, he asked the same question on here. Well done. Um, and, oh, well, there you go. David Platten, Pookie is looking tired. Time to give Rhodes a few games over the next 10 to 6 games. What do you think? Uh, mm, mm, no, not really. Um, he's, he's had a whole week to recover. I think he'll be fine. Um, but I, I think Jordan will get a chance over the, the coming games. Christmas period is so um, dense. I, I think players are going to get opportunities. It's, it's just about taking them for now. Um, and he's, he's done great in sort of his five-minute cameos, but he needs to extend that to a 90-minute performance, which I'm sure he will because, um, yeah, he's an excellent player at this level. He is indeed. That is very true. Uh, Elliot Bennett is injured, I think. That's a shame, isn't it? Because it would have been good to have seen him play on Saturday. Yeah, it would have been. He's, had a, he's having a good year as well. Um, as he's another one, great guy. Deserve what he gets. I think. I think with Elliot, what, when you put him on the pitch, it just gives you absolutely everything. So I think that's why he always used to resonate with all set of fans, really. Absolutely, bang on. And there's one question I'm just trying to uh, look at, but I can't read it all. Um, and uh, the dessert menu is over your left shoulder, says Alan, Alan Monument. Well, maybe we'll just do that once we come off air. Uh, I think that is it. How long have we been going? We've been going a long time. Huh? I've got time to be question. What? You? I've got Bradley Johnson Championship. Oh, yes, yes. I can't think of it where I believe one. Or. Or. Can any, any League One players? Peter can't think of got a winger, haven't they? Who what? Peterborough have got a winger. I think his name's Dembele, but I might be yes. who, who, looks, who looks a very decent yeah. player. So maybe him. One, maybe him. Anyone in the Burton team, if they're going to go and win at Middlesbrough, yeah. pick them up now. Yeah, yeah, That's what yeah, I say. Good old uh, Nigel Clough. Still in charge there, isn't he? Yes. Thank goodness. Still got it. Right. Uh, I think that is it from us. Sean's looking a wreck, but he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> For, it, for us for tonight and for 2018 on the Pinkin Show. So I hope you've enjoyed it all, uh, be it on Pinkin, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. I think we're still going. Uh, remember, you can uh, catch up with tonight's edition in full and all our superb Norwich City coverage on all those platforms, including our Pinkin app. But first, uh, but don't forget the app. Thanks, Grant. We'll get an, an advert from you in a minute. Uh, but first and foremost, Pinkin.com. Uh, I'll be at Ewood Park on Saturday alongside David Freezer. So make sure you keep taps on uh, all our feeds uh, for our big build-up team news uh, live and behind the scenes coverage, reaction and analysis. And if you see us around, please say hello. That's always nice. Uh, we will return on Wednesday, January the 2nd, 2019. Once again at 6 p.m. live at the Wolfpack on Golden Ball Street in the centre of Norwich for our first Pink and Show of the new year with all the usual fun and games. So please join us uh, then, be it online or in the flesh. And don't forget, we are working on rocking up at other venues come 2019. So watch this space and feel free to volunteer your favourite locations. Ah, uh, with an email to the pinkin at archant.co.uk. It's, it's, it's a, uh, Paddy David Tetner, we're not going there. I don't think Paddy would appreciate that. Um, it's the same email if you want us, uh, uh, if you want to join us here on the show as one of our fan pundits too. In the meantime, a big thank you to our guest tonight, to Grant Holt and to Callum uh, Southwell. Do you enjoy it, chaps? All good? Very good. Yeah, very good. Um, good luck on Saturday, Holty. Thank you. Nail it. Uh, to all our guests throughout the year, to the Woolpack, as well as the other venues that have uh, put up with us over the last 12 months, to all our crew, but especially Dan and Sean, who is an Ipswich fan, so he's had to put up with a lot for all their efforts and not hitting me too often. And of course, to all you guys, wherever you are, for watching and getting involved, uh, we really do appreciate it. We will see you again next year. Next year. Until then, here's to a points laden Christmas and the chance to remember what's proven to be quite a year at the club we all love with the prospect of an even better 2019. I think we can all raise the glass to that. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year and good night. <laughs>